Every year, around 11 million tons of oil are processed at this plant, a massive facility designed to produce the kerosene that powers our planes, the butane that fuels our kitchens, and the gasoline that moves our vehicles. But how does an oil refinery work? We visited the largest refinery in North America to discover the different processes crude oil goes through before turning into the fuels, lubricants, and valuable components we need to manufacture millions of products. Civilization couldn't survive without it. This black, viscous substance is everywhere. It powers our cars, makes our planes fly, and provides energy to our factories. It lubricates our machines, our weapons, even our skin. It paves our roads and is the chemical foundation of plastic, rubber, and synthetic fibers. Thanks to its high energy density, a small amount of oil can generate large amounts of energy. In 1859, Arwen Drake drilled the first commercial oil well in Pennsylvania, USA. It was a discovery that changed the world. Soon after, the need arose to refine that dark liquid. At first, refining was simple. Oil was distilled to obtain kerosene, a fuel used for lamps. The rest of the oil was discarded. But with the arrival of the automobile in the early 20th century, everything changed. Gasoline, once considered a useless byproduct, became valuable. From then on, refineries evolved, going from rudimentary facilities to complex factories capable of transforming crude oil into a huge variety of products, from fuels to plastics, cosmetics, and medicines. This is the largest refinery in North America. It spans the size of 300 football fields. At its facilities in Wyoming, California, over 200,000 barrels of crude oil are processed daily. The oil arrives on large ships and is pumped to the coast. Inside each barrel is a mix of hydrogen and carbon molecules forming all kinds of bonds known as hydrocarbons. These compounds, along with smaller amounts of others, are mixed within the crude oil that comes from the oil fields. The refinery looks like a small city. Metal towers rise like skyscrapers, while an endless network of pipes and valves winds between giant tanks. But behind this industrial landscape lies one of the most sophisticated and technologically advanced infrastructures in the United States. Inside, engineers, operators, and scientists work to transform crude oil into products vital to our daily lives, fuels that move the world, oils that protect engines, and essential compounds used to make plastics, cosmetics, textiles, and even medicines. The process begins when gigantic ships carrying millions of liters of crude dock at the terminal. With the help of powerful pumps, they unload their contents through a pipeline. This 75-centimeter diameter pipeline transports oil at an astonishing speed, over 7 million liters per hour, a constant stream of liquid energy flowing non-stop. The crude flows into four massive storage tanks. Each can hold 300,000 barrels, enough to fill more than seven Olympic swimming pools. Once the crude oil arrives at the refinery, it's still not ready to be processed. Despite its dense and dark appearance, it must go through several preliminary stages before becoming something useful. In the giant storage tanks, the crude is stirred by powerful industrial agitators to homogenize it. Huge mechanical arms continuously stir the contents to ensure the mixture is uniform, with no separations or sediments. But mixing is not enough. This oil comes with water, a lot more than you'd expect. So, the next phase is decantation, a process that separates water from oil by density. The heavier water settles at the bottom of the tanks and is carefully drained to leave the crude as dry as possible. But there's still one major obstacle, salt. Oil extracted from the ground contains mineral salts which, if not removed, can corrode equipment or interfere with chemical reactions. For this, it undergoes a specialized treatment in desalters, where fresh water and electric current are introduced. This combination breaks emulsions and removes dissolved salts, leaving cleaner crude. The oil refining process starts with one of the most impressive and crucial stages, distillation. The crude is heated in an industrial furnace to temperatures over 370 degrees Celsius. At this intensity, molecules vibrate so strongly that the liquid turns into vapor. This hot, pressurized vapor enters a huge metal tower known as the distillation column, 
a vertical steel giant that can reach over 60 meters high. Inside this structure, something remarkable happens. As the vapor rises, lighter and more volatile molecules, like liquefied gas and gasoline, continue upward to the top sections. Meanwhile, heavier and denser molecules like diesel, kerosene, or fuel oil remain behind, accumulating in the lower levels. At the very top are the lightest gases, like butane and propane, used to fill gas cylinders. These gases exit the tower, are processed, and stored for sale. Just below is gasoline, used as car fuel. Both light and heavy gasoline, known as naphtha, are obtained. Then comes kerosene, airplane fuel. Next is gas oil, the fuel for diesel engines. Then comes fuel oil, used in factories and industrial boilers. Lower down is lubricating oil for engine lubrication. And finally, at the bottom of the tower is bitumen, also known as asphalt, used to pave roads. None of the substances that come out of the distillation tower are finished products, they all require further treatment. They've been underground for millions of years and must be thoroughly cleaned to remove contaminants. One of the most important tasks at this stage is removing impurities, especially sulfur, a naturally occurring element in oil that becomes highly polluting when released as gas. The treatment is a process used to produce cleaner fuel, helping to protect both the environment and our health. When the molecules are heated and come into contact with a special catalyst, a chemical reaction occurs that removes the sulfur. These sulfur compounds can later be used as fertilizers and in the pharmaceutical industry. But not all elements are ready, some even need atomic treatment. Heavier liquids need more processing to become useful. For that, a process called cracking is used, allowing the refinery to make the most of the denser components in crude. This type of oil contains long chains of carbon and hydrogen molecules. With this process, complex hydrocarbon molecules are broken down into simpler, more useful ones, turning the heavy fractions of oil into lighter, more valuable fluids. Reforming is another process that increases the amount of gasoline obtained from crude oil. One of the products separated during distillation is a liquid called naphtha. The number of carbon atoms in naphtha is similar to that of gasoline, but its molecular structure is more complex. Reforming reorganizes the naphtha molecule, transforming it into a molecule similar to gasoline. This process turns less useful compounds into high-octane gasoline. In a refinery, nothing is wasted. A barrel of crude is too valuable not to be used to its fullest. After going through the entire refining process, the products still aren't ready for the market. What's obtained from the previous units are base components that now must be blended with millimetric precision to form the commercial fuels we use every day. Different compounds, light and heavy gasolines, stabilizing additives, and performance enhancers are mixed to achieve the exact desired octane rating in gasoline. This is how the different grades we see at gas stations are created, regular, mid-grade, and premium, suitable for different types of engines. Once mixed, the fuels are stored in giant tanks. Their contents are transferred to tanker trucks. Each tanker can transport about 70,000 liters of fuel, enough for around 1,500 refuelings. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might find it interesting. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to keep learning.